Uh, well, this is something uh, I was a run form coach uh, for years and years and years, um, probably close to 20 years. Uh, Danny saw a lot of people being injured. I saw a lot of people being injured. Um, you know, we're passionate about what we do. We helped them in different ways, but we were working on form. Uh, we were seeing form because of the injuries. You know, Brian and I talk a lot about um, trained runners coming from a background who did high school track or, or, or college track uh, or ran their whole life. They have a reinforcement of knowing the basics. So many people just get into it and we have this in altered influence and all of a sudden, you know, we're injured and we're talking about it. We're going to the docs, we're quizzing, and we're wondering why we keep pushing through the pain. Uh, it, it, this is not going to go away. You know, we, with the passion that what we had, have you guys, did you guys see much of natural running or barefoot running before three years ago? Uh, it took us 15 years to get to our starting point. We never gave up because we knew it was the right thing to do. And like I said last night, Jerry and I looked at each other and we said, okay, we built this shoe, it has high communication. It allows you to run on an unnatural surface with protection, but if you tap into it, you'll run with the barefoot style. And so Newton is the first company in the world uh, with footwear, as far as I know. I think a lot, like 99% of all the others are trying to come and say, oh yeah, it was our idea to lower the heel or whatever, or give afferent feedback or whatever. That's why we have 13 worldwide patents now, you know, protecting our intellectual property that we work so hard on. We're a tiny little, we're a <laughs> tiny company. And so we started the movement. It wasn't Vibram, that was a, that was a boat shoe that, that uh, you know, has been overemphasized as a, as a barefoot running shoe. That was a boat shoe. And prior to that, years and years ago, it was aqua shoes. You know, those came and went. And that's, that's why I think they, you know, some people think it's a fad. But guess what? We have the internet, right? We have, we have these chat rooms. We have these discussions. And we know what we're doing is correct through research, through Danny and I looking at people, through people like Zola who we looked at and said, look at that form. They'll carry that form if they can communicate. If they can communicate, they can feel the ground and regulate their own impact. They can regulate their body movements. Running is the whole body, but it starts with initial contact of understanding the surface underneath you. So. As far as I'm concerned, we spent all this time on it. It's not going away, and you didn't see it prior to Newton because we're the first company to also help you with those form changes. You know, people don't listen to our adaptation period. They go, and they said, just like Jay said before, they do not have the flexibility to run more <laughs> parallel to the Earth. Humans were born to land more parallel to the Earth under their mass. Thus, we are long-distance runners. I've run 100 miles in one day many times. You don't, you don't do it on your heels. You don't do it on your heels. You do it by lifting with your core as opposed to pushing off with your calves and hamstring. That goes pretty quick, believe me. 30 miles, that's done if you're running that way. Okay, so it's not gonna go away. Newton basically has started this discussion. That's why we're here today. You're gonna hear from all your other brands, hey, we got this great idea. The other thing is natural surface, unnatural surface. Go practice running naturally on a natural surface, right guys? Right, Zoe? Yeah, that's how she grew up. It was fun, she made it fun, it was fun. Let's not make it so much hard work. Unnatural surface, man-made surface. That's when everything got altered, right? You don't see soccer cleats with high heels, right? Why did, why did they ever put it on a runner? We run, they run. It's altered. Everybody, you know, we have this information society. It's not gonna go away. Definitely from Newton's side, sorry. So uh, I had a bigger uh, challenge than you guys do trying to get through to your customers is my mother-in-law. Um, <laughs> you know, she, she tries to buy, buy shoes weekly for my kid and I had to set down a very rigid policy that any shoe was more rigid than this rubber band right here was basically getting thrown in the garbage can and she tested me and I threw, I took pictures of myself pitching shoes in the garbage can, <laughs> um, which she loved by the way. Um, but uh, you know, I, that's, you know, that's my MO. So, you know, we're talking about, you know, Zola's foot structure developed 
really well because she started doing that from birth. Uh, and I'm doing this, trying to do the same thing for my kid. Now, again, can she run around barefoot around town and everything else? No. I mean, there's, it's a, we live in a society that has glass and rocks on the road and idiots throwing litter out there. So whatever. We have to deal with it. But you know, I'm giving her as, as little as she can. And she'll be in as little as she can as long as I can keep her that way um, until she hates me when she's 12. But, uh, you know... Um, I, I think that, you know, we like, like Irene said, I think it's making inroads now and younger folks and putting them on the right track and those where we're starting. And I think that, you know, convince the parents this is why we're doing this. Convince yourselves this is why we're doing this. There is a reason to do it. Is it a fad? No, I don't think it's a fad. I think that there there's some objective data out there that shows things are moving in a different direction. Do we have all the answers? No, we don't. Are we learning a lot still? Sure we are. Are there more studies to be done? Yes. But I think there is a, there's some good knowledge base to build upon right now and show there is some proof to the pudding and, and trying to figure out you know some of these unanswered questions. But but that's I think this is a direction which which we should ethically as well as from a business standpoint move things in. I would say it's not only in the shoes, but also we're trying to get simpler and simpler and more clear in how we teach people how to run differently. So that's ongoing. I'm still learning how to teach people in a better way. I'm always learning a simpler way. I'll hear a word that Danny uses, and I'll go, God, i got to get that, you know? You and so, <laughs> so we're always working at trying to make it more simple, and that'll help you guys be able to transfer this over to your clients. So it's been a lot of information here, a lot of good thoughts and everything, but I'm sure you guys have questions. So uh, we'll spend the next 20 minutes with uh, firing questions here, and then I think these guys will be here a little bit after that. But um, so who's first? This is a question I get asked a lot as well. And, and when you look at the barefoot runners, like there is really, and, and there's an underground, you know, the barefoot Ken Bob and that whole group of people. Um, and I've, I've talked to many of them. Most of them run on hard surfaces. They do. They run on the roads. I mean, the, ro the barefoot running races are on the roads. There's a barefoot running society now that's developed with state chapters, and I've been to some of the meetings. It, it, and I'm not saying they run exclusively on the roads, but they run on the roads. Um, and what I was saying to you is I think you can safely run on the roads, but you have to make your legs bring even softer. So it's a little bit more work when you're running on a harder surface. Do I think that it's the only way to run? No. I think you can run barefoot really. I believe you can run barefoot on any surface. Were we meant to run on those hard surfaces? We didn't evolve to run on those hard surfaces, but can you adapt to it? I've seen plenty of people do it without injury. I just think you have to be probably even more careful in how you bring your, your, your mileage up on those harder surfaces because you have to work harder. That's, I run exclusively on hard surfaces barefoot and I haven't been injured. But I'm, I, I do think that there's a caveat to that. You have to take it very slow and you have to listen to your body. Yeah, I would just echo what I, Irene was saying is it's an adaptation and a learning <laughs> process. If you look at even cultures around the world that are truly barefoot developing parts of the world, there are a lot of them that are basically stone and they're running around barefoot, but they've lived that way. Um, I think once you really learn that, you know, what Danny Abshire is talking about, just that afferent feedback, you know, when your foot feels the ground, and that's a learning process, you know, if you've shut that off for years, it takes a while to develop that back. You know, you're actually, you can run on these sharp, rocky trails, but you, you know what's happening even before your foot hits the ground. You know, that's not day one. That's after you've worked on things a while. So there's a lot of hard you know, surfaces, you'd be like, there's no way you're going to run in this piece of Kevlar or a five finger or barefoot. That's going to hurt maybe day one. But actually, once you've done it for a few months, your, your foot just actually just adapts. And you don't have to think about it. It's just happening innately. It's like if you were to jump off of a table onto the ground, a hard floor in your bare foot, the first time you did that, the impact forces would be pretty high. But after about three tries, actually, you've, you've just learned it. And you're like a cat. 
So I don't think there's one answer for that. It's all what feels good.